We have not. We're going to let Coach Rule handle that tomorrow. How, what goes in, I mean, three days from the game, what goes into your thought process as crunch time years with that? No, just, you know, we make an evaluations on who that's going to be. I get, a pretty, I get a pretty good idea of who it's going to be. I'm just going to let Coach talk about that tomorrow, you know, from a final standpoint of the decision. We still have one more day today. We're going to look at a couple things. So, um, you know, we, we, we've got it down to kind of where we need it to be, but Coach will let you guys know about that tomorrow. Do you find that in your role you spend more time thinking about the weakness than potentially the strength? Like, Bushini's kind of a known, but do you, do you spend more time worrying about that one thing that might go wrong? I worry about everything. It's my job, part of my job. But yeah, where, where this is with the first year for me is like 90% of what we're going to do is in and we've been working on it. But that 10% of all the things that could happen on special teams um, is a lot of stuff. Like there's a lot of situational football that you can maybe get a rep at. And there's going to be a couple things that we're probably not going to, but like try to do the best we can to get a, a look at, at what we're going to do. But some of those, some of those really uncommon special teams plays that um, happen very infrequently are hard to get worked on. Those are the things that keep me up at night. Um, that's that's not as hard from the standpoint of you know because you you know what the offensive and the defensive depth charts kind of look like so you start to pare it down you know whatever ten days ago you can start looking at it so the, we got a bunch of dudes that can play special teams so I'm not I'm not losing sleep so much about who the guys are going to be because there's a really good pool of guys that are that'll that'll go so that's not as much of my concern as experience with some of the, the, the small details of what, what you need to do to, to be a great special teams operation at the college level. What was, what was uh, Bushini's camp like? I mean, his, what was his August like? He was really good. Like, he's got a big leg. Um, he had a really good camp. He was very consistent. He can kick it far, and he can kick it where he wants it to go, so I feel really good about what he, about what he can do, what he brings to the table. He has leadership qualities. He's taken that unit. Um, you know, to, to, to heart, very personal for him to go out and have a you know have a good day. Uh, you know, if he doesn't, if he misses a couple of kicks in a in a in a rack, he, he's very critical of himself. Um, but but he's been really good. Yeah, that's a, they're, that's a great question, Mitch. It's, there's a lot to, to that. Like, you, you know, uh, we got we got some guys that can kick off. So I, I don't I don't want him to have the pressure of the world on him to have to kick off every kick between his leg running down there. His job is going to be to you know to be our punter. Um, you know, Timmy's kicked off and, and and Tristan can do it. So like that job, I think you're going to see evolve throughout the course of the year. Um, I'm not sure who's going to kick the first one. To be honest with you, it really depends on, you know, what the situation will be. But, like, you know, I, I think that's going to be one of the one of those things that uh, we're going to keep working on throughout the early part of the season. How does the how does the situation change for a kickoff? Wind. Wind. Yep. Uh, you know, do the wind direction. Who can who can get it up? What direction the wind's blowing? What the um, who's who's hitting the ball well? You know, really, because they're that close together. So, who's hitting the ball well in the pre practice part of that? So, there's a couple, those are really the two things that we're going to look at. We have a question about Evan Johnson at that kick return spot. And how much is decision making a big part of that? You know, when the Bearcat did take it the 25 and all that? Yeah, and, and you know, Emmett, uh, both the Johnsons, Emmett and Ramirez, have done a really good job back there of catching it. Making the decision of you know when to when to catch it, how to catch it, how to approach it. They they track the ball well. Um, they both can run through things, and they're both fast enough to break away. Uh, they have good vision, so they're both you know they're both guys that can do it. What's the what's one of the or two of the differences between them? Um, there's not really a whole lot of difference between them. I you know I, 
I think uh, Ramirez might be a hair quicker, and, and and Emmett might be a hair more physical. I don't I don't know. Maybe, but but they both are they're both really good, and you know Minnesota kicks it to both sides of the field. So you know in the, in the college game you have two guys back there that can, you know they can do it. So we you know we've got to be ready to to have both those guys back there and and going and being able to return in either direction. So I, I like if you ask me like if they're both back there who I would want it to kick to. That's a hard question to answer. Like I, I'm good, I'm good with either one of them. Like I really am good with both of those guys as. You know, Big Ten kickoff returners. I think they're both going to be really good for us. When we see uh, five or six true freshmen on the two team, how big of a, of a role is special teams in getting those guys comfortable and ready so that they can go in the secondary or wherever they need to go as the year goes on? Yeah, I think it's I think it's a good way to get the, those young guys on the field and get them some seasoning. Um, you know, playing full speed and getting maybe getting some butterflies out and you know getting their first hit or whatever. So I, I think it's. You know, I think it's a valuable part of their development. I think it gives them, you know, gives them confidence to be able to go out there and, and do whatever, whether their other jobs are. I don't, you know, I don't know where they are enough on the other depth chart to know whether they're going to play their first play on, you know, on defense. In the NFL, it was easy because their first play was almost always those young guys was almost always on special teams because you didn't have a lot of guys. So, you know, I, I'd like to play the punt team with the, you know, with the black shirts and the single digits personally. Um, but you know, I think those other units against Minnesota are going to be, um, you know, we might, we might pop a, a couple young guys in there, see what they can do. With those black shirts announced, what's been the impact of that group of 11 specifically on special teams and the tone that they've set there? Well, it's great when you when you line it up and because and you don't even really notice it until you get out there and you got the punt teams all, you know, all black shirts, just about all black shirts. So, um, you know, that, that's really cool. And the number of single digits that's out there that's playing because, you know, we try to always, coaches always, Coach Rule's always wanted to get the best players on that, you know, on that team. So you look out there and you got zero, you got two, you got four, you, you know, so that six. Is that, so you got a bunch of guys out there on that punt team that make you feel really good that the peers think that they're the best players um, on the team. So that's always really powerful for us on special teams. In your experience, um, does a stadium with a true open end function any differently than an enclosed stadium when it comes to the kicking game? No, and but but the, but we will be out there looking at you know what the wind patterns are. I've never coached a game in that stadium, but I can tell you like from all the places that that I have coached, there have been some closed stadiums that have had a really kind of weird. You know, Carolina was one of them. Philadelphia playing, you know, coaching at Temple where they were both closed had kind of a swirling kind of weird wind to them. Um, so I am looking forward to getting out there and, and getting out there early and kind of getting a feel for, you know, what our game plan will be, particularly in the punt game with, you know, with the wind. Anything else, guys? Are you disappointed in this was Saturday or Wednesday night? Yes, I am. But I, I got things, I got places to be. Yes, I want my, my wife and my daughter will be here at the at the volleyball day, and my, my daughter's playing volleyball, and be ve they're very excited about, about being here. I was just out there walking out there with Kelly Hunter a little bit ago, and uh, just talking about just sit standing on the court and looking around and being like, oh my gosh, what an awesome opportunity for our girls to go out there and play. So yeah, I wish I was going to be there, but can't be in two places at once, and we got a job to do. We got to go to Minnesota and rock and roll. Thanks, guys. <clears throat>